Oh yes, it's finally time to check this thing out. Greetings, just got a blurb here for you about the Model F 77 Modern Capacitive Buckling Spring Keyboard from ModelFKeyboards.com. Or really, Model F Labs, I suppose. Yeah, this is a project that uh, I backed or put in my order for like five years ago or something. Like uh, 2016, 2017, I don't know. It's taken a long time for them to get made. And in particular, mine took a little longer because, uh, yeah, I wanted the, the keycaps that they were making for this. I didn't want to get my own and put them on there. So I could have gotten it a lot earlier if I wanted to. But I wanted to wait for the complete product. And, well, it's finally showed up. And I've gone for this one right here, the F77 Model F keyboard. And, yeah, it's a modern version of the classic that IBM made. I mean, they made all different kinds of them and different layouts for different systems, but I'm a big fan of everything Model F I've ever used, you know, the PC XT Model F keyboards, the AT, and uh, all sorts of weird little things in between, industrial boards, with the, the small little ones and the Kishavers and all that. There's all kinds of different things of Model F, but they're all really expensive and hard to find and they're really old. And of course they use outdated standards and things, so you need to use converters if you want to use them on a modern system. And well, it's not like this one's cheap either. But uh, considering all the different options that you get and you have all these different, yeah, I mean, look at all these things. And the fact that it's a brand new or newly manufactured old technology, you know, capacitive buckling springs. This is distinct from what the Model M does. You know, that's buckling springs over a membrane, but this is a, yeah, totally different thing. Feels even better in many ways than the Model M uh, for typing, especially. And yeah, having this one in a modern form factor and some other features that make it really great to use, highly appealing to me. So that's why I bought one all those years ago and finally showed up. I so really appreciate that in the box that this came in, check out the packing slip. It's actually printed out on this classic green and white dot matrix tractor feed printer paper printed on a dot matrix printer, it appears. Very authentic. In fact, the authenticity all the way around, I mean, this looks a lot like a lot of the IBM boxes from back then, just in its simplicity. And like even this, it straight up looks like one of the stickers IBM put on their Model F keyboard boxes. So anyway, I cannot wait any longer. Let's open this up and use it. See what it's like. Ooh. Hey, again, in keeping with that IBM 1980s feel, we've got uh, this little little booklet here, Keyboard Operator's Guide. Congratulations, I now own keyboard technology from the classic age of computing, modernized for today. All right, bunch of warnings, introduction to function layers. It'll be interesting to learn this layout. It's uh, so all this stuff, this, this whole kind of layout here, the block layout on the right hand side, that is different to me. That's cool that you have different options. Look at that. You can just switch around the keys and then change it by switching function layers. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, let's open it up. Oh, wow. All right, so we got our cork feet. Let's just get all this out of here. Uh, of course it is USB, that is you know, it's a modern keyboard, so that is that. I'm not going to be using this on an old machine unless it happens to have USB, but it's not going to be that old. A little extra little spring just hanging around in there. A familiar sight. Oh, man. <laughs> this feels... Wow. That feels like a solid block of iron <laughs> or steel in this case, but still, we'll see how much it actually weighs. That's, that's right around four kilograms, it's almost nine pounds. So uh, it's a little bit darker, a different color of an industrial gray than I was expecting. I like it, but it's almost more olive, kind of depending on the lighting, perhaps. Oof. 
yeah, those keys feel really good. Hmm. Enter does not. I might have to readjust the spring on that one. Uh oh. Have to adjust that one too. And pop back up, but uh, this, that's kind of common. It sometimes happens on any buckling spring keyboard where the spring doesn't quite buckle. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so there's a little springy on there. There we go. Now that's got the click it should. Still doesn't feel quite right to me. Every other key feels awesome though, seriously. Well, in the meantime, uh, here is a look at the bottom of it there. Why is my ID number, it says zero on all of them. Do I have like serial number zero? Huh. I just noticed on the packing slip, it also says serial zero, ID number zero. Well, that's kind of neat. And then here are the other selections of keycaps. Mm. And stems. Yeah, look at that. So these are for swapping things around on that numpad uh, control area there. Whoops, dropped one. Yeah, all those different configurations, different keys. All right, I'm going to get the feet on here at least. So just kind of you know, put them along the bottom corners here. Do I want to cover up the holes or not? I kind of do. <laughs> Let's do that. And yeah, I do space the top ones a little closer to the middle there. That's how my uh, other model Fs are as well. So there we go. All right. Oof. Really excited to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can try to fix that up and uh, get this plugged into a PC and give it a little bit of a test. Because yeah, actually I already really like the layout that's on here for this section, so I'm gonna leave that too. Okay, so it's about a week later, I've been using it about a week. It's fantastic. I love typing on it. It's an absolute dream to use now that it's been broken in a little bit too. Everything feels smoother, absolutely reliable. I mean, it, oh, yeah, oh man. <laughs> If you like Model Fs, you like this capacitive buckling spring stuff, this is where it's at right now. There's nothing else being made like this on the entire keyboard market. As far as I know, this is where it's at. Uh, and yeah, in terms of getting that space bar fixed up, uh, I did. I didn't record it because screw that, I wanted to use it. Went through and, and kind of did the repair. It's not really a repair even, it just needed to be sort of reseated. So I took this row of keys out so I could access the rest of the space bar, like the spacer and whatnot. And uh, with that accessible, I just took the space bar off, fiddled around with the spring, kind of spun it around clockwise, moved it upwards and put it back in place. And then it was buckling correctly. And this really is something that's not unusual with Model Fs whatsoever. In fact, there's a whole section on the website for the Model F keyboards for these modern ones that it goes into that. It's just something that happens and you kind of can't avoid it. It's inherent in this classic design from IBM back in the day and it, it's the same for the new ones, but now that everything's back in place, it feels great. Spacebar is nice and clunky, reliable, works from every angle. Oh yeah, but the only other thing, I did also add just a little bit of white lithium grease and adjusted the little metal clips that are under there that are holding the bar in place, the stabilizer. So that was the thing, but I don't think that's necessary. I just did it because I wanted it to be a little smoother. And also, in case you're wondering, as far as comparisons to original Model Fs, I have some XTs and AT ones, and you know, honestly, to my fingertips, 
the difference is so slight, and I think that probably just has to do with age. I mean, it feels as it should to my fingers. This is just even more precise feeling, a little tighter, a little, I don't know. Compared to something like, uh, for instance, the Unicomp Model M. Oh my goodness, that thing feels not good. I used that for about a month and I just, I put it away. Um, the original one, I haven't tried their like new Model Ms, uh, the Unicomp ones. And again, those are just classic Model M buckling spring situations with the capacitive thing going on. Those are got a membrane underneath. This is totally different, totally different league. And it feels very much like the original Model Fs in all the way that count to me, barring a few things. I do have some qualms and some complaints and things that I really wish were different. To the point where I'm so aggravated with this that I'm no longer using it on my main system. I just can't. <laughs> There's too many trade-offs, things that just bother me. I'm still gonna use it, but not on my main like editing rig. And uh, the number one reason for that is because the layout is just ridiculous. It's better than uh, an original Model F in many ways. Nice to have this whole cluster over here being standard and control and alt, caps lock and such being in reasonable places. But there are some caveats that I didn't even think about when I bought this and uh, kind of wish I did. Main one being the lack of a function key row. I guess I use function keys absolutely all the time and didn't realize how much I do when doing my work, editing, things like that. I'm constantly uh, doing like control F this or that or control alt things over here and shift and whatnot, uh, especially in Adobe products. But <laughs> I can't really do that here with one hand. I love doing things with one hand over here and just having the function keys. So all of these are the function keys and then right control is not control, it's the function switch like you'd see on a laptop. So in order to do F1, you do right control one and so on, which is extremely annoying. Why is this not the function key? It's a windows key. Nobody needs a windows key. <laughs> if I ever do, I just do control escape, it's fine. So why that's the default layout, I don't know. Um, I wish even that was the function key, but it's not. That is a, uh, this is numlock. So that's just silly, the default way that it's set up in the firmware. And, and the other thing too is because this is the function and not right control, there's a lot of things I do over here, especially in Photoshop, like zooming in and out, basic things like that that I can't do. Now I have to do over here and do that. I just hate having two hands on a keyboard when I'm doing editing or doing any kind of video, audio, photo work. Now, I could mitigate some of this by switching around. In the firmware, you can change the layout and I could move uh, the function key over here and then make this an actual control key. But uh, <laughs> that's my other kind of biggest annoyance with this is the fact that currently the firmware that is being used, as far as I can tell, there's no offline option for adjusting the firmware currently with the way that these are shipping out. So you have to go onto a website to configure your keyboard. And here's the other thing that's annoying, currently anyway, is that this is a beta version of that firmware and to access the beta, you have to go on an external forum, Desk Authority, and request access. It's not even on the Model F keyboard website. So now I'm dealing with some other thing which sends me to some other thing which is a website which <laughs> Is the exact opposite thing that I want to have happen on such an old school inspired, awesome, beefy keyboard like this. Just give me an offline app that I can run in Windows. Apparently you could with the older firmware, but not this one. Maybe I'm misunderstanding that. I don't know, because honestly, the, uh, the documentation is truly terrible. So it's subject to change. Again, this is all at the moment, the beginning of 2021. So maybe it'll be different in the future. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it's improving. In fact, there's some better documentation being written from what I've seen, but when you're Googling a lot of these problems, like I was just figuring out how do we change the layout? Okay, well, I need to go and get this firmware program and download it. Well, I did, nothing happened. Well, it turns out all these Google results were going to some Q&A section on the website that were ridiculously outdated and they haven't been updated in like three years. And now, like the more up-to-date things which are on the website are in this crazy long page that is just a garbled mess of text and links and things that go all over the place. And the only documentation that comes with physically was that little booklet that just tells you how to uh, adjust this by using the function key and like changing around the, the keys here. 
Yeah, which that's another great thing. I do like the fact that you can swap all these out. You can do that without needing to access that online firmware keyboard layout adjuster thing. <laughs> you don't have to do that to switch these keys, but you can't remap the other keys like this one or this one or this one without going to that web portal at the moment. Hopefully that'll change. Uh, let's see what else annoys me. Minimal thing, tiny little thing, but I do wish it was there. The feet. There's uh, none of this at all. So you're just stuck with this very flat angled keyboard. You have like that, yeah, basic banking upward, I guess. I think it's a slight, but that's it. There's no feet, no adjusters, nothing. I thought that was kind of strange. You know, I suppose this is based on a specific model of uh, industrial keyboard or smaller keyboard or whatever that IBM made back in the day that looked more like this and less like the other Model Fs that I'm used to, but I kind of wish it still had feet or the option to it. I didn't, again, just didn't realize that when I bought it. And uh, all these little things that just sort of added up and I don't want to use it anymore. Not for my main computer anyway. I'm absolutely going to use it on this one right now. It's just plugged into a Windows 98 PC because hey, USB, as long as it's got USB, it works. Uh, as far as I can tell anyway, everything I've plugged it into, Macs, PCs, so uh, as long as it's got the power to do it, then that's cool. I haven't tried it with like a USB to PS2 yet. So yeah, the future is interesting in regards to this. I'm gonna keep using it on these other project boxes, but my main system setup, just not interested in using it on there anymore. So it's ridiculously impressive and disappointing at the same time. Is it worth 400-ish dollars? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know, like I want to say it is because I paid it, right? But it's, if I'm honest with myself, I wish I hadn't gotten one yet and, and maybe waited around for another revision that had a layout that I would prefer to use more as my daily driver. Um, again, not knocking the keyboard for what, for what it is, right? Like there's just nothing else being made like this. The capacitive buckling springs are absolutely brilliant. I love typing on this, but that's it. If I'm doing work <laughs> that I do, you know, editing and whatnot, it requires a lot of these extra keys and like just uh, all these little annoyances that I don't like about it. And uh, that sucks as it is now. It's just an annoying thing to use uh, for my daily driver. And so I'm gonna use it on other computers that I do stuff with. Uh, that's that. If they do come out with another one though, that's like a more reasonable layout and has some I just a lot of the things that I'm looking for, I would absolutely sell this one and get another one in a heartbeat because I love the build quality of it. Like that's the biggest thing is it's built so well. It is an absolute monster of a keyboard. It seems like the tolerances are very well put together. It's miles, miles, miles better than the Unicomp buckling spring, uh, which I expected, but still it's worth saying because I know a lot of people are going to try to compare it to that. I just wish it were a little bit different for my main computer usage. That's it. Uh, this thing is fantastic. I know I've just been rambling about all kinds of things. If I've gotten some stuff wrong, let me know. I might have just missed it. Anyway, let's stop talking now. This has been a very blurby blurb. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna continue using this, just not on my main PC.